three, two, one. Here we go. Ahoy, friends. It's me, Dave Landau. After a long night on stage, I like to kick back with a captain's hat and a fine cigar and watch the Dennis and Andy show. These guys are huge nerds, but they're the kind that you actually want to hang out with. Enjoy them. I do. Yes, he does. Thank you, Dave Landau, for that exciting... Oh, my God, now my phone's ringing. I can't talk to him right now. Doing a live stream. Good Lord, right when you don't expect it, the phone rings. What's up, Randy? Yes, busy day streaming. Well, you know, Dennis, so you might be wondering, this is the Dennis and Andy show. Where the heck is Dennis? He is the better looking one after all. Dennis is in Wisconsin. Uh, his mom went under the knife for some surgery. I just got a message from him. Everything went smooth. So he's going to be taking care of her for a couple of weeks like a good son does. So Dennis will be back maybe next Wednesday, uh, live streaming from Wisconsin. But today was actually surgery day, so he couldn't even jump on, which is fine. Priorities of family always come first. Um, so anyhow, sorry, I just got a text. Oh, my God. Charleston, I don't understand. I never get this many phone calls during the day. I'm serious. My phone doesn't ring until it's like, hey. He's actually doing something. So I know no bare shoulders. I mean, I could ooh, pull it down a little bit for you, but no. So anyhow, we're here today. We're going to be joined by a guest. Uh, let's bring him on. It is uh, Mr. Edwin Acevedo. How are you, Edwin? How's it going, man? Oh, it's going good, man. I, I got to say, uh, apparently this is the place to be right now at five o'clock, man, because you know, you're, you're the most wanted guy in uh, comics right now, so I appreciate yeah. you having me on. I don't know if I'm the most wanted. That doesn't sound too good. I didn't do it, honestly, I swear. <laughs> uh, so Edwin is here. We've chatted before. We're going to talk about his uh, the sign-up. He has a sign-up for his new campaign going right now, which is the Ace Volume 2. There is a link in the description below, so you can go sign up for it, but uh, before we get to it, and I'm going to show the Ace Volume 1, that campaign is closed, but have no fear. I'm going to go out on a limb and say uh, you could probably get Volume 1 as a part of Volume 2. Yeah, that's that safe true? money right there. That's safe money right there. So even though it's closed, uh, once Volume 2 launches. So, uh, Edwin, I don't know if I've ever asked you this, but what was your... Uh, what was your, your tale of how you got started in comics in the first place? What brought you to go, you know what? There's crazier jobs out there, but none as crazy as creating comics. And that's what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, uh, me, I'm, I'm a lifelong comic book fan, you know. Uh, I discovered them shortly after I came to the States when I was about like seven years old. And ever since then, you know, they've kind of been along with kind of like sports, they've been like my other passion. So, you know, when I was growing up, I always wanted to be an artist for Marvel uh, originally, you know. Uh, I love the X-Men books, Spider-Man books. So, yeah, that was kind of my dream up until probably the end of high school where, you know, it really wasn't in the cards for me, you know. Uh, Right. Sadly, I I don't have the uh, artistic talent to to kind of make it in comics. So, you know, but I've always still stayed been a fan even after. Uh, you know, sure. and uh, over probably like early 2010s, kind of my love for comics ended up kind of fading. I thought the quality kind of dipped and, you know, I still loved them, but I just stuff wasn't really moving me. And, you know, right. uh, a couple of years after that, I uh, ended up discovering, uh, you know, everything that was going on. And uh, as far as like, uh, you know, your boy, Zach, Ethan ended up doing his YouTube channel. And I kind of figured mm-hmm. out that there was all these people that felt the same way. And that's kind of what started my journey with uh, with Comics Gate. And, you know, like I said, along the way, I've kind of been from the first kind of couple of years. And then I made a lot of different connections and met a lot of other 
uh, indie artists that were kind of living their dreams and making their own comics, you know, thanks to Indiegogo and uh, the customers. So that once I kind of saw that, that it was possible, it kind of re-sparked that initial dream that I had to be a creator, this time more on the writer side. And it kind right. of started, led the initial stages of creating uh, the ace. And, you know, ever since then, I've kind of been hooked trying to be, uh, trying to make my dream come true. No, that's cool. I, we we do always like to ask, and Dennis usually does, but he's not here. Do you remember what the first comic book you ever saw, bought, read was? Yeah, uh, I'm, I always forget the title, but... Uh, it was a Spider-Man comic. It was issue number four. I believe it's uh, The Superior Foes of Spider-Man was the title of the series, uh, mm -hmm. if I remember right. Uh, but yeah, that's the first ever comic I picked up. I uh, had no idea. I could barely read it, uh, trying to figure out what was going on in the pages of the, of the book. But it was so much fun and just like it, it really hooked me. And then after that, sure. uh, my next... I believe it was Uncanny X Men 282 ish. Around there, it was okay. uh, the cover with uh, Storm and Bishop facing off. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 that, yeah. After that, yeah, once I saw Will's Portatio's art, I was, I was done. <laughs> you know, it was like, this is, this, this is comics are the greatest thing ever. You know, that's so after that, I kind of never turned back. That's cool. Yeah, I remember that cover too. I think uh, our very own Art to Bear inked that. If I remember correctly, I have to That's ask him. Art. But I remember that issue very well. I love Wil Wilson's art on that stuff. Uh, all right, sorry, just had to, my wife texted me. Um, yeah, I remember that stuff really well. That was such a fun time uh, in comics. You know, to me, that was just you know the ninety early nineties nineties was a really fun time, and that's what I'd like to get back to is that type of fun and enthusiasm the comics had. And I think we're seeing that now with, you know, Comicsgate and the Indiegogo campaigns because the creators working on the stuff like yourself and myself for that matter are, you know, we're really putting our all, our heart and soul into the pro projects because they're ours, you know, and we really just want to entertain the fans and stuff. I assume you find yeah, I mean, that to be I, the case. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, to me, the biggest thing, like I said, seeing the passion of guys like Phil Diaz, you know, Sid, yeah. uh, Joe Bono, all these guys that are that I know behind the scenes that we've known each other for years now, and we just, we always hang out and bounce ideas from each other and stuff. Seeing, mm -hmm. like, you know, all the dedication and work, how can you not get inspired to to to, to do the same and put out the, the worst, best work possible? You know, nobody's here trying to get rich or trying to do some sort of scheme or anything each project that we put out you know i can speak from the heart like you know the ace is, is my baby it's, it's my love letter sure. to, to the comics that i grew up and love same thing for for guys like you know joe balls deaf 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 like that's his passion project he's working on that for years Like he's gonna pour every bit of sweat he's got into that and you don't right. see that anymore in that kind of mainstream comics so yeah this is where it's at so how did you come up with the idea for the ace? Where'd that come from? Uh, the ace just kind of happened by happenstance almost, you know, it's like a lot of things just kind of went in together to, for everything to kind of hit. Uh, initially, uh, you know, like I said, I, I was basically just a customer for CG trying to help creators live their dreams. You know, I backed up tons of books. I think I'm, I'm all over a hundred books right now that I've backed yeah. since getting into the comics gate. So I was just there to support. And like I said, I've known all these artists and creators and then ended up meeting this artist, uh, Sweens. Uh, he's working on a book called Oddity. Should be shipping out soon. And we just struck a friendship and I asked him to do a little avatar for me. And he came up with this incredible kind of early design of the ace and it just kind of blew me away. And I just kind of, it started kind of my head spinning. I've always been somebody who who's kind of been on the creator side, you know, even you know, I would just kind of come up with different ideas and write them down, even if they didn't have an avenue, you know, if something came to my head, I'm, I'm somebody who like writes stuff down and I can kind of just write a whole kind of idea for like a comic, a movie or whatever, and just have all these notebooks full of like ideas and stuff. So this just kind of sparked that in me. And I started kind of coming up, all right, who's, who's underneath this armor? 
what's his backstory and kind of like right. they just started kind of coming together and it took a, about like two years a little over two years for me to kind of get the script right for me to find the correct artist like canales to get the initial designs done but it just kind of evolved over like that time before i finally launched it was well over i think like two years by the time i finally ended up launching the indiegogo so there was a lot of work done to, to make sure that it, it felt right and it felt like you know, the, the biggest test for me is like, would like 13 year old me buy this? If right. he, was, he showed up at the, the comic book store, he, lo- he was looking at a spinner rack with all these CG comics. Would mine grab them? And, and right. you know, un- until I was sure that it would, I, I, I wasn't going to put it out. Well, and that's the thing, you know, comics, I've always said, and, and, you know, most people know comics is a visual medium. You know, it's not like a novel where you pick a novel up, read the back cover and go, oh, that's interesting. You know, I know for myself, I'll pick a comic up or go to an Indiegogo campaign. And before I even watch the video or read through the campaign, I'll scroll through it to see what the artwork looks like. And if I think the art looks cool, then I'm like, okay, now I'm going to go back and see what this is about and, and go from there. Because I can always deal with with artwork that is appealing to me and a story that's a little so-so more than I can uh, bad art and a great story, you know, which is, you know, I'm sure I've missed stuff that has been fantastic reads, you know, over my years in the business just because the art turned me off, but you know, oh, well, Um, I love the one panel here on your signup page with these two characters. I mean, they just look really fun. I love the fact that they're uh, anthropomorphic. I think that's right. Where it's the, you know, kind of the animal mix with human characteristics and stuff. Um, What's your, what's like the elevator pitch for the ACE? If somebody was like, give it to me short and sweet, what, what would you, uh, how would you describe it? Uh, Yeah. uh, For, for the uh, first campaign, I always uh, said, uh, the Ace was the story of a young man looking for purpose who discovers a sh- the remains of a shooting star that grant him the ability to transform into an armored being that becomes the most cool. wanted uh, uh, in the entire universe. That was kind of like the, the header. Because, you know, like I said, uh, this is a love letter to a lot of the stuff that I grew up on. And some of my favorite sure. books were kind of like the, the, like the C-list books from Marvel, books like Dark Hawk. Uh, oh yeah, Steve Walker, too. Those kind of funky, weird books that had these great character design and, and, and like interesting backstories. So like, I like you know, the Dark idea Hawk, of man. Movies, yeah, Dark Hawk is incredible potential to the character. Like that was never really utilized. Uh, you know, in, infinite possibilities, and right. you know, it's kind of like the same with, with this uh, with uh, David, who's uh, who's the main uh, young the the young guy who who ends up finding this armor. You know, it's, it's a story. I'm not just like superheroes and like, you know, big, giant, uh, talking space sharks and uh, badass uh, Mandalorian looking armor. It's the story of a young guy, you know, who's 21 years old. And he's trying to figure out his purpose in life. He's trying to really right. figure out how to be a man and, and, and what to do with these powers and what to do with these situations. You know, yeah. how is he going to go, you know? what he decides kind of early on is basically going to guide the rest of his, his life. And so, so there's stuff underneath that's kind of deeper than just the fantastic stuff, which, you know, sure. I, I'm a fan of kind of layering that together. But yeah, if you just want to pick it up and want to see like, you know, the ACE and uh, Kula throw down, uh, you know, beat the crap out of each other for, for several pages, you can do that too. You know? <laughs> no, that's cool. And then Randy asked, will volume one be available? In the second campaign, and I believe you said it will be. So yes, uh, uh, yes, it's that? actually, uh, it's actually going to have a cover by Joe Ball for uh, the second print. Oh. which I'm really excited about. Oh, so. so you're doing are, you're doing a new cover for the volume one? Is that what you're saying? Yep, uh, this cover right here that's by Donald DeLaves, exclusive yep. for the first campaign. All the oh, covers cool. and everything are exclusive to each campaign. So uh, yeah, we're going to see a brand new cover for. Uh, the second printing of uh, volume one. I like this dude's art style you found. It's uh, 
It's, oh, hold on. Joe Bernardo says, if the art is great and draws me in, I pick it up. Who wants to go through a great story and read it when the bad art turns you off to the story and like a movie throws you out of the world? Exactly. Um, and it's true. It's, you know, if, if it's bad art, it can just be distracting. So, but I like this stuff because it's, it's kind of quirky. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to think of who it reminds me of because it, it definitely reminds me of somebody and it, it's just escaping me now. But I like, I like the way he does the characters and the angularity of it and stuff. I think that's pretty cool because it's different. Yeah. Canales has done like a great job. You know, people who kind of followed him from like uh, Iron Sights uh, to mm -hmm. like now, he's, he, he's improved so much. And the stuff he's doing in Volume 2 just blows away anything he did in Volume 1. Like, uh, cool. especially with thanks to uh, the new colors that I have on the book, how. Mm -hmm. They just blend together and the book just pops even more, which is, I'm just very thankful about. You know, it's like he just kind of just feels more comfortable with the world, with the characters, with the setting, everything. Uh, and like he did a great job in the first one. Uh, but like I said, I'm, I'm really excited for people to really see what he, he's got in store for volume two because it's really, the, I think the whole book, all the artists, Sweens, uh, who did uh, the epilogue story for volume one, he's back. For volume two and he, his artwork has also just gotten better and better. All these guys are just like cool. killing it right now. So I'm excited. No, that's cool. Very cool. Uh, and this is for people just watching or whatever. This is just the first campaign. I just want to kind of go through it, even though it's closed, just so you could see more because the sign up page, you know, Indiegogo doesn't allow you tons of room on the sign up page to show stuff. So I figured. Showing the first campaign would give you an idea too about about the concept. Let's go back to volume two and oh, you know what? I gotta see. Let me test this. I don't know if I shared my audio or not. In fact, I don't think I did. So let me let me stop sharing. Let me share it again, this time with audio so I can play the video. All right, let's see. Weird. nice trailer yeah uh, shout out to red gaze for that uh he oh he yeah they're great captures, yeah capturing a lot of the uh the tone that the the kind of uh the ace kind of universe uh entails so, so did a good yeah, job yeah. with that randy says yeah 90s big guns you're damn right big guns and cool looking characters i love that lineup of characters where it was you know the fun the weird that was that was cool um so when are you looking at, when are you launching it? 
Uh, it's launching on uh, April 24th. So it's almost here. Oh, yeah, dude. Almost there. Well, that's cool. Uh, just to switch up a bit, you said you were into sports and stuff. What what sports do you like there? Um, big football fan. Okay. Who's your team? Uh, Broncos. Oh, are you excited for next year with their little, uh, with their new QB? Yeah, man, getting Russell Wilson. We've been suffering with awful quarterbacks for the last like couple of years uh, since Peyton retired. So I was going to say since get, Peyton uh, left, yeah, it's been, it's been rough, little rough, rough years. It's finally nice to have a real quarterback, and you know Denver's known for quarterbacks. So once our quarterback is good, the rest of the team will follow. So. Yeah, I was really surprised when I saw – I remember calling up Dennis and being like, dude, did you see Russell Wilson's going to the Broncos? And he was like, what? Because he thought – Yeah. He thought that it looked like uh, Rodgers might go because your new coach, wasn't he the offensive coordinator at uh, the Packers last year? Yeah, the there were also like uh, Rodgers was saying if he didn't get like a new contract, Denver was like his number one option, so. There's a lot of yeah. things in play, but then I guess the GM was kind of, when all of this was happening, he was kind of being sneaky behind the scenes and was like, hey, Seattle, uh, what's it going to take? And Seattle was like, hey, he's going to take this, this, and this. And the GM was like, all right, it's done. So, yeah, very, very I got happy. It, man. I, I was I'm pumped. I, I, it's exciting when that happens with the team because it gives me renewed interest to want to watch at least – you know, because I'm I'm a Dallas fan. But when it comes to teams getting a quarterback like that, it does give me interest to want to watch a few of the games to see how it goes. Um, I was hoping they would get Rodgers. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, I was hoping it, they would get Rodgers just from the selfish standpoint of uh, that would knock Green Bay down a few pegs and then I could laugh at Dennis because Dennis is a Green Bay fan. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah. everything comes up roses for Dennis and the Packers, so that didn't happen. Yeah, man. But uh, I was hoping. That's the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I, I was hoping. But hopefully that'll help Denver out. I'm very curious to see where Baker Mayfield goes. That was another shocker over the past few weeks when they picked up, uh, was it Deshaun Watson? And I was like, What? I thought Baker Mayfield was their man. I couldn't believe it. I was like, "Are you, what, what is going on? Baker's built up that team. They were crap before he got there, and slowly they've been rebuilding and stuff. And all of a sudden, it's like out of the blue. Yeah, we're going to go with Deshaun. And I'm like, Deshaun's been in the league, what, five, six years, something like that, four or five years? And it's like, and Baker is still pretty young and fresh. What I don't know. I didn't get that one at all. So I'm very curious that to see where he ends up. I hope he kind of ends up in the NFC. Yeah, I think that's probably be his, his best bet. But there's a lot of shakos right now. Like nobody, as far as quarterbacks, almost nobody's safe. So, you know, if you're, if you're out there uh, and you're a GM that needs a quarterback, you know, you might as well get on some phone calls and see who's out there. Because, you know, they, these teams oh, are yeah. on quarterbacks like they used to, you know. Well, that would be the Panthers. The Panthers need a quarterback. Uh, here in Charlotte, where I live, they need one. Um, I tell you, a rumor I heard that I thought was interesting is, you know, Tom Brady. So Sean Payton retires from the Saints as the coach. Tom Brady retires. And then I guess they talked or something and kind of want to come up with this plan of it looks like, you know, the Miami coach was going to get canned and Sean and Tom could go into Miami, you know, Tom would ask for a trade. Sean would, you know, vie for the job in Miami as head coach, which I'm sure he'd get no problem. And it'd be the Sean and Tom show in Miami. But then once after the coach in Miami got fired and brought up the lawsuit or filed a lawsuit, I guess Tom and Sean were like, never mind. So, <laughs> you know, who knows? Maybe next year, you know, maybe Miami – coach because i think they finally did hire a coach maybe they'll just use him i don't know i just found that very interesting that you know after two seasons with the bucks tom would be like all right let me go see if i can make it happen for another team 
Because look, we all know Tom's a great quarterback, but you know, that's a lot of confidence to go. I'm going to walk into a team that's not great. Let's say Miami with a new coach and take them all the way. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, it didn't surprise me. He unretired. You know, I thought the whole reti- when he announced his retirement, I was like, mm, I'm not buying it. And then just, uh, Tom, Tom's right. going to go when, uh, when, when he's, he's, uh, basically can't do it anymore. He's going to have to be beat into submission for him to retire. So I guess Randy says nice time. looking art. So there you go. Thank you, Randy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I thought he was actually going to stay retired. I really didn't see him unretiring. Um, I uh, thought he was going to watching stay him here in uh in Massachusetts. Uh, you know, you get a different feel for Brady. <laughs> I, I was yeah, surprised when he left for him, but you know, like uh, he Tom's got an ego too. You know, he's not just gonna play by the rules. Sooner or later, it was gonna end here in New England. So. I mean, I agree. Oh, Joe said, at least you have a decent quarterback, Andy. I have to look forward to Trey. No chance. Wanted Justin Fields from Ohio instead. Instead got mid-level. I hear you, Joe. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I thought thought with Tom retiring, it's still, even though obviously they didn't go to the Super Bowl, he still went out on top. You know, he won the Super Bowl the year before. He took Tampa Bay to the playoffs again. I still felt like he was going out on top. I just would hate to see him, you know, come back, play for Tampa next year. And I mean, cause he's at least got to make the playoffs. I mean, if he doesn't make the playoffs, that's definitely not on top. You know, that is, that is not going out on top. Going out on top is going deep into the playoffs. And if he doesn't do that next year, I think he will be back for another season. Cause I don't see him going out that way. Uh, Randy watches mm-hmm. hockey. I, I like football is like the only sport. I don't know about you, Edwin, but football is the only sport I can really watch on TV. Uh, hockey doesn't do it for me on TV. Basketball doesn't do it for me on TV. Baseball bores me to tears. Uh, I mean, what about you? Uh, you know, I was a big kind of fan of all sports. Like, uh, you know, uh, I do still watch hockey, but I mostly just watch playoff hockey. I'm a Penguins right. fan, so, oh, okay. uh, you know, if the Penguins are in the playoffs, I'll watch them, you know, but it, it's hard sure. to keep up with them. Like, I think the, the TV doesn't really translate hockey as, you know, I, we have like a like a minor league hockey team, and, and it's just great when you – I've gone to a couple of games and just watching, like, the hits and everything is so much better. Like, if you were, like, in one of these hockey uh, cities, you know, going to actually see hockey – like on the floor in a stadium. Is, is oh, dude, I've over. gone now. <laughs> like I said, played as much. Yeah, I've been to live hockey, live basketball, live baseball. Every one of them, I think, is fantastic when you're there live. You know, but for some reason, those three for me just don't translate over to TV. But going to them live, I think they're awesome. Uh, yeah, on think, HBO uh, Max, the they're only, doing the that show. Me. What's that? I said uh, the only other sport for me is uh, MMA. That, that right now I can just watch it oh, anytime yeah. on TV. The way they shoot it and everything, you hear the hits. Like they get, they got great production. It's just like two guys in a cage. So, right, <laughs> you know, kind of. That, that's something yeah, I, I can just, always watch on, on TV. You know, growing up, I was never really into boxing. I watched, you know. Uh, I remember Mike Tyson. I remember watching his fights. But besides that, I never really watched boxing much. You know, I never really got into MMA. I don't have anything against it. I think it's kind of cool. I just never got into it. And then for the longest time, I'd watch wrestling, which is still a sport. It's just an entertainment sport. But, you know, that's one where it's better to watch on TV because when you go to a live wrestling match, if depending on where you're sitting, you can see some of the some of the hits aren't landing and stuff like that because, you know, it's entertainment. It's made for TV, you know, whereas when you're there live, it's more about not. Uh, I mean, I think the matches are still a big part, but I think more of it is 
the the skits they put on and the guys talking in the ring and stuff that performance is better live so i don't know i just always like talking different things and stuff uh randy says let's see edwin are you going to launch on a youtube channel yeah i'm gonna launch uh on bankrupts so. oh that's Enjoy. cool of course, that'll keep yeah. you late at night because I assume it's uh, it's uh, it's late for us because I've been on Bancroft's channel and I'm like, let's do it, and I gotta drink uh, I gotta drink my my coffee and stuff to stay up because he usually goes live by 11 a.m. Eastern. So <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's cool. I'm a bit of a, a night owl, so I, I prefer kind of like the late night streams myself. <laughs> Oh my God! I don't know how you night out. The early morning ones, uh, the morning ones are killer for me. Like, ask me to come on a morning stream. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> Got to oh, plan man. a couple I... of days ahead just to like wake up early and, and go. Wow! I don't know how you do it, man. I'm just, I'm not a, I'm not a night owl. You know, I can do, you know, I, I prep myself Mondays to do the King Show on Ethan's channel because I know we go late. And then the professionals on Thursday night, we don't generally go past 10. So that works out. But when I see people stream at like one in the morning for two or three hours, I'm like, wow, man, <laughs> I wish. Yeah, especially uh, early it. on in, uh, in CG, like uh, that, that definitely was me. I, I'd, I'd jump on the, the midnight streams and go to like three in the morning, three, four in the morning. But try not to stay up that late. But yeah, definitely still like, you know. I kind of like the the nine ten o'clock, eleven o'clock streams myself. Yeah, Randy, uh, I've got fifteen. I have a, I have a, a tier on my campaign for buy me a beer, and I've got fifteen sold. And I said I would drink them live, so I don't know if I'll do all fifteen, but I might have to break <laughs> it up if it stays at fifteen into groups of five. But uh, but you, you you might get to see me get sloppy, so we'll see. But um. Is there anything else you want to talk about campaign wise and stuff? Uh, mostly just, you know, uh, we do have the sign up page. Uh, it definitely yep. helps out uh, as a creator uh, trying to get a kind of head count. And, you know, we're offering this uh, special oversized sticker for uh, anybody who signs cool. up and backs the book. Got an amazing piece of art by How Conley. So you'll definitely want to check that out. I might even turn into a t shirt. Uh, how great the design Oh, that's nice. Out. And yeah, just, you know, help us spread the word. Like I said, we're launching on April 24th on Bancroft, uh, you know, uh, so any, any retweets, anybody, you know, if you know anybody who's kind of a fan of kind of this style of comics, let them know, you know, uh, helping spread that word out, you know, there's a lot of campaigns and stuff going down right now. So it's a little yeah. hard to kind of make your way in, but yeah, we're, we're plugging along. And also uh, if you're an artist, uh, I am doing a, uh, uh, an art uh, contest for uh oh. i'm doing the uh inside back cover of uh volume two uh the winner gets a hundred dollars uh the inside back cover and the highest tier of the campaign uh the, can oh, that's cool. the art contest is going yeah it's going until may 24th so you have time and just use the hashtag ace two art contest on twitter i'll find it and uh, yeah, so I think it's a great opportunity. Uh, I had some foreign art in the volume one that was really cool. So I'd love to be able to get like a, a kind of newer artist, some exposure on the book. Uh, so, you know, if you know any artists out there looking to get their name out or whatever, uh, you know, uh, tell, tell them to, uh, you know, sign up for Twitter and use the hashtag. And, uh, you know, anybody who, who, uh, ends up uh, submitting something, uh, you know, we'll place it to like a fan vote. So we'll make it nice and fair. And the, the best piece of win. Very nice. That's cool. Guys, go sign up for this. It's uh, the Ace Volume 2. The sign up link is in the description below. So please sign up. Like he said, you get a nice oversized sticker, which is always cool. And doing an art contest. So anybody watching that's into that, uh, I guess just pick any character and uh, work it up and submit it. And uh, Edwin, how can they find you on Twitter and stuff? What's your handle? Yeah, you can find me at Edwin Aces. There you go, at Edwin Aces. 
I'd like to thank him for coming on the show, Edwin. I really appreciate it. We're just trying to build the channel and uh, it helps out having different creators on and stuff. So thanks for coming on. And guys, I'm going to bounce out of here. I know it's a little earlier than usual when I do, but my wife and daughter are going to be home soon. And since there's no Dennis, uh, we usually go out to dinner after the show, but tonight I'm having dinner with the family. So uh, I'll be doing that. So uh, uh, Marcus says he watches a lot of baseball. Well, there you go. I heard baseball is good to have one is almost background noise sometimes. Uh, they play so many damn games. I was on the Yahoo homepage and I saw the scores just going down today and I was like, holy crap. Uh, Randy says, thanks for the T public link. Ordered a couple of shirts. I'll be wearing it. Dude, you rock. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, and Edwin, once again, thank you for joining me. And uh, guys, as I always say, go check out my book, First Man. It's live on Indiegogo. Should be going to the printer next week. The link is in the description below. So if you haven't backed it yet, go reserve your copy now. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and uh, we will see you guys uh, next week. Everybody take care. Bye-bye, all. Peace.